Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, hope you're all doing well. All right, okay, so I've got another pickups video for you. So this is gonna be primarily original Xbox. Do have a couple of games for the PlayStation 2, and I've also got, well, I did, we did have two Blu-rays that I picked up, but one of them I've lent to my dad, so I'll just talk about that because I watched it last night, and the other one I can show you what it is. So, yeah. Went out yesterday, had a bit of a walk around, the usual kind of thing. And while I was out, I thought I'd have a quick look in the shops, you know, see if there's anything available. Because you never know, I'm always on the lookout for original Xbox. And uh, I went to a few different places. I went to cash generators, which I've not been to for like about two years or so now, because it just didn't really have a lot in there, so I just stopped going. Then there was CEX, and I picked up a couple of Blu-ray films in Poundland of all places. I, I don't go in Poundland that often, so I had no idea they sold films, so there you go. So yeah, what I'll do, I think I'll just uh, show the films first and then we'll get into the games and the good stuff. So I picked up two films. First one was Bangkok Dangerous with Nicolas Cage. Um, that's the one I've lent to my dad because he wants to watch that. Uh, I watched that last night and I've seen it before but I couldn't remember much about it. I just, when I saw the film, because there were two pound of Blu-ray and one pound of DVD and I thought, well, I'll have a look. And they've got some decent, um, decent Blu-rays. And I thought, Bangkok Dangerous was a really good film. I remember I enjoyed that film. I don't remember much about it but I know I enjoyed it, so I picked it up, watched it last night. It's a really good film, actually. Yeah, it is. And as I was watching it, I started to remember what was going to happen, which was good. And if you've never seen it, it's Nicolas Cage. He plays a hitman. He's sent to Bangkok, and he's got a job where he's got to kill four different people. And every time he does a job, he has five rules to live by, which he um, does like narration and tells you what they are. And one of the rules is that he picks up a local person who is disposable, that he can just you know, basically kill after the mission's done, and nobody will miss them. But when he's in Bangkok, he meets this kid called Kung, brings him on board, and he starts to see something in Kung. He starts to see himself in Kung, so he wants to train him and make him an assassin as well. It's a really good film. I was really surprised, because I know Nicolas Cage, he doesn't really like, he's not very picky when it comes to films. I heard he got into a lot of debt, and that's the reason why he was just making anything. But this is, this is from 2007, and it's an excellent film, so I'd definitely recommend checking out Bangkok Dangerous if you've not seen it. Um, it, it looks like it's an action film, but it's not at all. It's, it's much more of a, a drama, and um, it's much, much more narrative driven, but it's a really, really cool film. The second one I picked up is called Pride and Glory with Edward Norton and the Irish fellow whose name just escaped me again, Colin Farrell. <laughs> God, then I, keep, I keep forgetting his name for some reason. Ed Norton, Colin Farrell and uh, John Voight. So all great actors. Edward Norton being my absolute favourite actor of all time. So had to pick this up because I've never heard of it, didn't recognise it. And from what I understand, I saw the trailer before Bangkok Dangerous as it happens, it was on that Blu-ray, and on the back it tells you what it's about. So four cops are killed, uh, I think two are injured or something, and Ed Norton, his job, John Voight tasked him because of a family of cops. He tasked him to find out who killed these cops. So it looks really good, Edward Norton is just brilliant. Even if the film's crap, he's always really good. So I'll give that a try and I'll, I'll see how I get on with it. So I'll probably watch that tonight, I think. Right, let's have some tea first. We'll get you get ready because I've got a nice stack. I did really well yesterday. I was surprised. Um, I've not found that much in the wild lately. Xbox originals seem to just not really be out there as much down this end of the country. You know, I had the last video I did quite well. Got a few decent titles in in the one CEX. Uh, no, it wasn't CEX. So it was the game shop opposite CEX, wasn't it? So I went to a completely different CEX today in a different town and. I was really surprised because I didn't think I'd find much in there. But before we get to CEX, because it did really well, I went to Cash Generator, had a look around Cash Generator, and uh, it's a nightmare. For some reason, it used to be really easy. It used to be that the PS2 and Xbox stuff was just together. I couldn't find it. I was walking around the shop. I saw 360, PS3, 4, Xbox One, you know, PS2, Wii, everything. And I thought, oh, where's all the original Xbox games? Eventually, I found them tucked away on a, on a little shelf. Just, to, just by, um, I think it was underneath some 360 stuff and some DVDs and that, and they're just hiding in the corner. They didn't have a whole lot, so uh, what I did do, I picked up a couple of PS2 games and I managed to snag three nice condition Xbox games as well. So I did okay, and the prices in cash gen are really great because they're 49 pence a game. So you can't argue with 49p, can you really? So I'm going to show you the PS2 games. Now you might wonder why I'm buying PS2 games because I don't own a PS2. They are really cheap at the moment. I will pick one up at some point. Don't know when, but I'm going to pick one up. Um, reason being, I just want to basically play some of the games that I love on the system that are exclusive and there are other exclusives I've never played that I want to buy. So I've got a list of around about 40-ish that I've put together so far 
I can't really find a definitive exclusive list for PS2. I've looked all over the web and everyone's got different ideas of what's exclusive, what's not. I can't find a definitive list. If you do know where I can get one, please put a link down below or just drop a list down the bottom you know, in the comment section because I'd like to know if there's any games I'm not aware of. So I've got a fair few decent ones. There's one that came up that I've never heard of called, I think it's called Urban Rain. That's R-E-I-G-N, not as in the rain in the sky. And it's a beat em up, basically a scrolling beat em up. It looks bloody brilliant. It came out in 2006, I've never heard of it. And I looked at the gameplay, it looks great, and it's not an expensive game as well. So I'm going to look for that in the wild because I could obviously snag it on eBay, but what's the point? I'd rather try and find it and it's more interesting that way. So yeah, I'm just going to be picking them up in the wild, like most people do, because then you've got a story to tell when you find one of those gems, which I actually did find a gem on the Xbox, and I'm very chuffed to not show that at the end of the video, obviously, make you wait for it. <laughs> right, PS2. I picked up two games, that's all they had that was interesting to me, uh, unfortunately. But this one I grabbed because I absolutely love the TV show and I love the game, and that is 24 the game. Very nice condition all the way through. Uh, for some reason the disc keeps falling out. I don't know why, that's not broken, so I don't understand that. Manual's mint, look at that. Absolutely pristine manual. So, 49 pence. You can't say no to that, really. Uh, I love this game, I think it's great. Never managed to finish it though. I always got stuck, I think it was around about stage six. Uh, you have to go into a building and hack computers and that, and I could never work out what to do. I kept getting it wrong and dying, or getting caught, whatever happens, and it was just really pissing me off. Which is a shame, because the actual game is brilliant. If you've never played it, it's a third person action game. You do take cover, but it's not like a proper cover shooter. It's just really just running around and gunning people down as Jack Bauer and shaping CTU, and it's fantastic. I believe it's set around the time of season three because uh, Kim's boyfriend Chase is in it, and I'm pretty certain it was season three when he came into the show. Uh, if you're not interested in 24, you've never watched it, I mean, first of all, watch the show. Even though it's like nine seasons, it's absolutely amazing. Well, you only really need to watch the first eight because the ninth season is a spin-off. It's not Jack Bauer. But great show. But if you've never watched it, you're not interested, just play it because it's a really cool third-person action game. I thoroughly enjoy that. It's nice to see a spin-off from a TV show actually done well. Next one i got, brilliant game, I hope, it should be, 49 pence, absolute bargain, because I looked at CEX weeks ago to try and get ideas of prices for Xbox and PS2, what I should be paying, and I was really surprised, I think this one was around about four quid, I think CEX, don't quote me, but I think it was four quid, um, so I expect it'll be a few more on eBay, but I saw it for 49p, I thought I'm having that, because the Wii version is one pound in CEX, I haven't found it, and I thought, well I'm gonna grab the PS2 version, because it's an exclusive, and that's Medal of Honor Vanguard, so 49 pence, I can't believe I got so lucky. And I've just realized I've taken the stick off the back so I can't prove it, but trust me, it's 49p. Both of these games were. Uh, lo a lovely one in excellent condition, flat manual, lovely disc. Um, very surprised how good condition the games were that I found yesterday. But yes, I'm very much looking forward to this. I love the Medal of Honor series. One of my favorite first person shooter series, obviously because most of it's World War II and I love World War, World War II as a setting for third person, it's just really, really fun. It's also quite good in third person when you play games like the Saboteur. So World War II is just a, a rich environment and God, I can't believe I just said that, but it really is. It's just one of those great times, if you can say that, to set a, it's a great period to set a game in. I mean, there's just so much history and there's so many stories to be told and stories that haven't been told. So you can mine it forever, really. But yeah, I'm looking forward to playing that one at some point. Because the only ones I've not played on Medal of Honor are Vanguard, no, um, Medal of Honor Heroes on the PSP, I think. I'm pretty certain I've played it a little bit, not played it properly. And then Medal of Honor Heroes 2, which you can get on the Wii and the PSP, I've never played. Pretty certain it was the first one I played, not the second one. No, my luck, it probably was the second one, I don't know. So I want to get Medal of Honor Heroes 2 for the Wii as well, because I want to try and play all the Medal of Honor games, because I've played all the rest of them, and I love them. So that's the PS2 stuff. So as I say, there will be more PS2 coming up as, I, as and when I find them. I'm on the lookout for Quantum of Solace at the moment. I really want to get that back because I need to finish that game. So I was watching my old gameplay of it from years ago and it's so good. It's a really, really cool take on Quantum of Solace because obviously it's made by Treyarch and we had on the PS3 and the 360, we had the first person slash third person mashup, which was bloody brilliant. I love that game. If you've not played that one, check it out. Absolute hidden gem. And on the PS2, they did a third-person cover game, and it's really, really good, and the graphics are absolutely outstanding, especially for a PS2 game. It looks really nice. <coughs> yes, I'm an Xbox fanboy, I know. Right, okay, so... <laughs> Xbox games. So I picked up three games in cash gen. Uh, decent titles. These were also... Yeah, I'm just checking, I've got stickers on the back of these. are 49 pence as well. 
First one's a sports tile, and that is top spinners, top, top spinners, top tennis, oh for Christ's sake, start again. Top spin tennis, thank you. I'm pretty certain, I'm not 100%, I think there's a sequel to this as well. Uh, as you can see there, hopefully you can read that, 49p, bargain. And from what I can remember, it's similar to Virtual Tennis, which I absolutely loved on the Dreamcast. Great game. So I don't mind when they're more arcadey like this and not simulations of tennis because I couldn't play it then. So I'm really looking forward to popping this back on and having a blast because uh, it's a lot of fun. I'm not a big fan of sports games, but there are some like that, like tennis, jet ski. Um, what else would be good? Uh, I'm blanking. I know there's another type of sport. Oh, snowboarding as well. Things like that, anything arcadey. If it's an arcadey version of sport, then I'll give it a shot, you know. I'm not so big on the old FIFAs and all that and the Pro Evos. And definitely not the Madden games because I ain't got a clue what's going on. I don't understand American football. I've tried. It just, it's like, whew, makes no sense to me at all. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next up, got two games from a series of games. There are three of them on the Xbox and the PS2. Couldn't get the first one, unfortunately, which would have been nice to get all three, but I've got these two anyway. And that is the Warrior Within, Prince of Persia, the Warrior Within. Another 50p bargain, yeah, 49p. Again, in really nice shape as well. All in really good shape, I've done really well here actually. I've pretty much jackpot with this one. Uh, I've got that one, and then we've got the other one, which is Prince of Persia, Two Thrones. Now, I haven't played these two all that much. I've dabbled with them, but I really, I used to always go and play Sands of Time, because Sands of Time is obviously the better game. And recently I came across, YouTube recommended a video about Medal of Honor. And it's a documentary about 50 minutes or so from a channel called Gamers. Brilliant channel, I subscribed to them recently. And I just want to basically give them a mention because of Prince of Persia. They did a video about that as well. So basically what they do is documentaries about games, a uh, game series and the evolution of the series and why the series has died off and disappeared. They're really, really interesting to watch, really well made as well. They also do ones which I love which was about the PS3 launch and the games that were announced like seven days and what happened to it and what, well, why it never came out. Absolutely fascinating. So definitely, I'll put a link down in the description. Check out Gamers because it's a great channel. And anyway, the, the reason I'm telling you is because they did a video about the Prince of Persia series going from the Mac and the PC all the way up until Forgotten Sands on the PS3 and 360. Really fascinating video. And in that video, they were talking about Sands of Time and how successful it was. I don't know which one came next was Two Thrones or Warrior Within. But whichever one it was, apparently the development went in a different direction. They tried something different, didn't quite work out. And then in the third game, they tightened it back up and it was a lot more fun. So I'm excited to try them both and see really what they like and see how we get on with them. Because I do like a Prince of Persia game. Right, next up. This is the best one. This is uh, my nice stack. I've got eight games from CEX. I was in CEX right now. CEX is too layered. Downstairs is all your tech, your tablets, your laptops, your phones, all the bullshit I'm not interested in. Modern gaming, PS4 and Xbox One. Upstairs they used to have a big retro section, they had arcades and things in there. It's not as good as it was. I went up there, I haven't been there for about a year, year and a half or something. And when I went in there yesterday, I went upstairs. They got a little glass cabinet with some cartridges for SNES and N64, some very overpriced PS2 games, uh, PS1 games, sorry. I thought, well that's pretty, pretty disappointing. They've got the, the screen still set up. They used to have uh, four flat screens, which they've still got for PS4 and Xbox One. So they've got two consoles over each, and you can play some games. And they've got a chill out area and a fake Donkey Kong arcade that's got like a main thing built into it. Um, but over the back wall, all across the back wall, they used to have PS2 and Xbox Original. Not now, it's just DVDs everywhere. And I was like, Christ, I, can't, I still can't, I can't get my head around it. People still buying DVDs in 2019. It just it blows my mind. It's like, with two generations, I'm on to 4K Blu-ray and people are still paying for DVDs. So they're watching a, a standard definition DVD on a, on a HD TV or a 4K TV. Insane. I understand if you're a collector and obviously some TV shows, a lot of the time they only come out on DVD, they don't, don't come out on Blu-ray, which is really bloody annoying. So I understand that, or if you want a, a certain version of a film, a, a certain cut, I, I get that. But just in general, people buying DVDs, it makes no sense to me. Anyway. Minor rant. <laughs> so I went back downstairs. I was a little disappointed. I thought, I'm not going to find any Xbox. What's going on? Where's all the original Xbox? We know CEX sell them. So I'm looking around. I'm seeing the Wii. I'm seeing the PS3, the 360, and all the usual gear. I thought, I don't understand this. And I'm walking, and the shop's not that big. And I'm just walking around. And I'm like, well, where's all the bloody Xbox? And then I happened to look up. And as I noticed, as I look over at the stairwell, I noticed underneath the stairs, there was a shelf of original Xbox just sitting there. And I thought, oh, there it is. 
I don't know why I didn't notice it, I just sort of walked past it a few times. So I went over, I had a look, there was, it ended up being two shelves worth of original Xbox, loads of great games, I basically just pilfered all the good shit out of there, left all the crap behind, and I did really well. And I, at the end, I want to talk about pricing and all, because CEX pricing is weird. So most of these are relatively cheap. So first one I got, first person shooter, World War II again, which is always good. Call of Duty 2, big red one from Treyarch, and this was £1.50. So this one I've played before, it's all right, it's decent, it's not outstanding in any way. It's, it, I found, actually found it quite boring the last time I played it, if I'm totally honest with you. But, you know, it's an alright game, it's decent. I think, um, personally me, I prefer the, what's the one I got the other day? Um, Finest Hour, that's decent. And the best one is Call of Duty 3. I love Call of Duty 3 on the Xbox, it's absolutely brilliant. And I notice it's just gone a bit dark, so I'm not sure what's going on with the lighting. Just bear with me one second. Right, okay, sorry about that guys, just had to uh, open the blinds, get a bit of daylight in here because it's... Uh, Looking a bit dull, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I think the sun's just gone and the dark clouds have descended, so it's going to piss down there, isn't it? Fantastic. Right, okay. So next up, another great first-person shooter, classic. And it is Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Tides of War. Another brilliant game. I loved this when it came out. £1.50 again. I uh, played it to death when it first came out, completed it. <laughs> loved it. Great game. All complete and nice. Unfortunately, shitty black DVD case. So I will have to change that, but I couldn't leave it behind for £1.50 because I love this game. Then I picked up another sports title, launch title for the Xbox, and that is Amped. So snowboarding, 50 pence, I couldn't say no to that. I need to get Amped too. I've tried playing Amped a few times since launch in 2001. Never been particularly good at it. It's a pretty tough little title to play because it's more of a simulator than an arcade experience in my, from what I can remember. And I found it really hard to get on with, but I'm going to go, I'm going to try, because I want to get better at this, because, the, you know, it is a fun game, and I do like a bit of snowboarding. So the next one I got is another snowboarding game, but this is an arcade experience, so this is right on my street. And for 75 pence, I picked up SSX on tour. So I'm aiming to get all of the SSX, I think there's two more, there's one, there's SSX3, and another one which I don't remember the name of. I've got them on my list anyway. There you go, all complete. And I remember years ago seeing Metal Jesus Rocks talk about how much he loves the SSX games, and in particular the Xbox games are really, really good. And I've only ever played, really, SSX, the original, on the PS2, the exclusive title, which was a great game. So I think I'll have a lot of fun with them. I mean, they're pretty straightforward and easy to pick up, and you just have to learn the tricks and have a bit of fun. They're like Tony Hawk's on snowboarding, aren't they, really? So pretty cool. I need a bit of lubrication, I think. There we go. Right. Next one. This game is a rally game. Not one I pick up normally because I usually only buy Rally Sport Challenge and Rally Sport Challenge 2 because they're my two favorite Xbox rally games. I've never tried the other rally. Tell a lie, I have tried V-Rally 3 and that was all right. It wasn't as good as Rally Sport. I will pick it up again just to play it. But this one, I found out about this recently. I mean, this is a common game, but I never paid attention to it. I was flicking through Instagram and somebody on Instagram was posting up mini Xbox gameplays and this was one of them. And I thought, bloody hell, them graphics look really good. And he was going on about how amazing the game is. And it looked really, really fun. So I thought, I'll grab that if I see it. And I saw it yesterday. Two copies in the shop. So I got the best one. 50p. And I got Colin McRae Rally 3. And it really does look good. So I'm excited to try this out and see what it's like. Uh, on the back, X Gamer said the greatest rally game of all time. And the official Xbox magazine. So take it with a pinch of salt. Graphically, Colin McRae 3 has no equal. The daddy of rally games has arrived. We shall see. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> there you go. It's got to beat Rally Sport Challenge and I love that game. So yeah, in excellent condition. Brilliant stuff. Graphically gorgeous, so I'm very much looking forward to just burning. I love Rally games because I love the fact that you don't have to take them too seriously. You can just burn around the track and have fun with them. Rally Sport Challenge is a little tougher in that respect. You do have to slow down on corners because you just die. I tend to go off the track and crash a lot. Rally Sport Challenge 2 will do a lot better. And I seem to be able to really get to grips with that and to understand the gear changes and things, which is not something I'm good at usually. Next one I picked up, I picked this one up initially because I was going to use the case for Wolfenstein. I just wanted a cheap game to nick the case for. But it's actually in really good nick, so I thought, well, you know what, I'll just keep the game. Because it isn't all that bad. There is a better version of this on the system, but it'll do. And it is Enter the Matrix. Uh, it's 50p. Now, if you know the Matrix games, there is also Path of Neo. And Path of Neo is a far superior game to Enter the Matrix. Uh, all complete. But Enter the Matrix is alright, it just looks really, really dated now. It looks proper outdated and old. 
but it's, it's still a bit, it's, you can still have some fun with it because it's a Matrix title, so, you know, it's 50p, I mean, why not? <laughs> right, so the last couple of games I got, the last one in particular is a real bargain and an absolute gem, and I'm really chuffed to have found that, but before we get to that one, we've got a movie title. For one pound, I picked up Batman Begins. Now, this is a really cool third-person action game. It's a bit like an early version of what Asylum became with the fighting mechanic. You just beat the hell out of people, but you also get to drive the tumbler as well which is really cool. And I never knew about this game until I started collecting Xbox years ago and I had my first original Xbox collection. And I played this and I thought it was bloody fantastic. I was really quite surprised how good this game looked. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to pop it back on and see if I can get somewhere. Because I got quite far, but I remember I get stuck as well because it got quite tricky as I was playing through it. But it's a, it's a fun little title, that one. Now the last one, I can't believe my luck when I saw this. I've been, I was hoping I'd find this in the wild. Didn't expect to find it anytime soon because I'm still early days yet. But uh, yeah, I found it. I can't believe it. Extremely lucky. It's going to get more comfortable. There you go. So right, my seats just don't feel right. Okay. <laughs> right. So yesterday I saw I was looking through the, the, the games. And I was going along the shelf like that. And as I was going along the games, and I was picking some games off the shelf. And I just at the corner of my eye I saw this spine. And I thought, oh shit. Now I know when I've checked the price on eBay. The buy now prices start at eight pound for a decent copy, so I thought, well, it's going to be a pricey game at CX. Luckily, it was half that, and it was four pound. And I was going to leave it, and then I thought, no, because if I leave it, I'm going to regret that, and I'll want to, I'll, I'll, I'll constantly keep smacking myself about not picking it up. So I mean, obviously, I'd find it eventually, but I just thought, you know what, you want to play it, Pete? Just buy it, and it is the Punisher, an absolutely fantastic third-person action game. I absolutely love this game. It's so good. I couldn't finish it last time. I got about three quarters of the way and I hit a stumbling block. But I'm going to go back and try and play, finish this game, play through it because it is so good. So if you've never played The Punisher, it's on the PS2 as well. Pick it up and give it a blast because I never see people talk about this game. And it's, I suppose it, you could call it a hidden gem in a way because no one ever talks about it, but it's a fantastic game. Really, really, really fun. And you basically just run around as Frank Castle, just murdering people left, right and centre and blowing stuff apart. It's my kind of game. So I love action games where you can just sit back and just shoot, and it's really good. I nearly picked up Time Splitters 2 as well, but unfortunately, when I took it to the counter, I had one copy and the disc was the classics disc, so I went, nah, you can keep it, mate, which is a real shame, but there you go. So, pricing in these CEX, right? For the most part, pricing is pretty good. As you can see, like, you know, £1, £1.50, some for a 50p, some a little bit more expensive, like the Punisher. But the thing I, I couldn't understand yesterday, they had Splinter Cell, the original. You can get it for a couple of quid on eBay all day long from Music Magpie or anybody else. They wanted six quid, no chance. Then they, they had two copies of Unreal Championship 2. Now I picked up the first Unreal Championship in my last video, so they're on the shelf. So I wanted to get number two, but I pulled them out. They're both in average condition, they weren't great at all. And they wanted 10 pound a copy, and I was like, no, that's ridiculous, because they'd just been in cash generators. They had the game in there too, in worse condition, at 49p. Now, if obviously the condition is everything, but even if you had, I don't know, 49p in cash gen, so if you wanted a mint condition one, at the most you're talking two, three quid, you know, not bloody 10. So I don't know who's pricing games at CEX, but they're a bit mad. And I went on eBay, and sure enough, if you want a good copy of Unreal Championship 2, you can get it shipped to you for two quid with free delivery. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. So really you do have to know your prices and be aware of what you're looking at. Because you know, if you're not, you'll just pay the money and get ripped off. So, I mean, I won't pay that in CEX anyway for a game. It'd have to be something that's like rare and something that I really, really want. But I have noticed, I mean, it's weird with the Xbox, most of the games are dirt cheap right now, but it's just the odd one that seems to be going up. When I bought the console, I paid 20 quid for the console, with about, I think it was about 10 games or something. Real bargain, the DVD drive needed fixing. I sorted that out, really easy to do, just clean the drive belt. And it came with one game, Indiana Jones, um, The Empress Tomb, I think it's called. It's an average third person action game, it's nothing special, but it's, it's, it's okay, it's worth a play for. Anyway, I noticed recently when looking up prices to find out what, what I was going to be facing with doing this Xbox collection, and CEX, they sell it for £12, and I thought, what? There's no way that's worth 12 quid. So I went on see onto um, eBay, and for good copies, they were starting at £15 by now, and I thought, bloody hell, and some were asking like 20 quid. So I don't know what's going on, the pricing's a bit weird, I don't know if the Xbox is about to start going up. And maybe the PS2 as well, I don't know. I don't really know too much about the PS2 market. I don't really know the Xbox market. So if you're a PS2 collector, is that happening as well? Maybe it is, let me know. 
that. It's very interesting. So you go, guys. So at the moment, I've currently got 21 games over there. So small collection. I've just added another. Was it um, 11 there? So I've got 32 games to start with. I've made a list up of the games I want to get, so I'll make sure I only buy the games I want. And last time I collected Xbox, I got to around about 134, 135, something like that. I've got around about 100 games on my list. It works out about 130 in total once I've got everything. And that's including a couple of imports, which I will have to buy via eBay. There's a couple of American imports I never knew about before, which I've got on my list, as well as the usual stuff that I love, like Kill Switch, which is exclusive to the PS2 in PAL regions. But it did get an Xbox release in the US and it's a brilliant game. I've played for it a few times. It's fantastic. And Tony Hawk's 2X as well. I want that. And then there's Metal Gear Solid, uh, Metal Gear, sorry, Metal Slug uh, 5. Yeah, Metal Slug 5 in Japan. And it's also in the US as well. I think it's a double pack in the US. It's 4 and 5. And I think, if I remember correctly, when I bought it last time, number 5 is only available as a single release in Japan. So I'll grab that at some point. So, I mean, there's not that many like international exclusives really for the Xbox that interest me. But there's just a couple, a little handful that I want to pick up, and they're not expensive. So, but I can get them at any time. It doesn't matter. There's no rush at the moment. I'm just enjoying going out in the wild, checking out the shops when I'm, when I'm out and about, and finding some bargains. Hopefully, and I've, I've done really well. I've found some good deals there, and uh, yeah, Punisher in particular, bloody great. I'm really glad to have that. I'm proper chuffed. I mean, I probably like they're all in good shape, but I think at the end of the day, in the future when I've done it all, when I've got all the games I want, I will buy a stack of brand new cases and switch them out because I've done that before. I just like to have nice clean cases on my games. Right guys, well thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please leave your thoughts down below as always and I'll see you again in my next video.